Hi, so in video 103, what we did is we took a speaker and this lump at the back here we made into, um, well, a rotor for a brushless motor actually. So if you want to know exactly how we made that, then just look at video 103, it goes into detail of how to make that. We lashed it up in a, in a rough sort of motor configuration and ran it as a brushless motor, which was kind of interesting. But obviously motors are not my big thing, that I'm interested in them but not as much as I am in generation. And there was a, a comment posted, hey, how about making it a generator? And of course, I was always gonna make it a generator, but thank you for that comment. And um, this is the generator version of this. So we take this rotor that we made from 1030, and then all I've done actually is put a housing together because um, that is builder's board or Sintra board, just a drum really. And that rotor fits rather beautifully into that drum, nice and snugly. Now all we've got to do, obviously, is surround that with coils. Now, if you're anything like me, I hate winding coils. Really, it's one of those tedious jobs that you have to do when you're thinking about generators, and I absolutely hate it. However, I have been collecting and been sent quite a few of these things. This is a fan from a um, microwave oven. But if you take apart fans, you'll find this kind of induction motor. It's called a shaded pole motor all over the place and you keep coming across them and they're really easy to get these beautiful beautiful coils out and they come with an iron core all you do is pull that fan off undo the two screws that you'll see there or drill them out take out that drum and that's the rotor which is the shaded pole rotor and you'll be left with that now grab yourself a pair of pliers or a um, vice or a G-clamp, squeeze the bottom, and that whole thing will fall out as one piece. It just puts a bend in there, and it falls out as one piece with its beautiful iron core. So, they're so quick to take out. I've got 14 of them sitting right here. Now then, let me give you a close-up of this, so you can see what the structure is like. So it's just a couple of squares of central board, and it's got a cavity there made out of a bit of plastic, and this drops straight in its little hole. There we go, and that makes a housing for our rotor. Now if we put the cap on there, it's actually quite a nice tight fit. That thing stands there like that, and I've got a collection of coils here, and all I'm gonna do is glue those coils on there around it. Okay, so I've put nine coils on. I'll probably able to get 12 and I'll give it a little feet, and to my mind, it looks a bit like an aeroplane engine, actually. So, we won't know which way around to wire these coils at this stage. So what we do is just pick a coil, attach a positive and negative, give it a spin, and we can get a volt, 1.1 volts out of that easily enough. So that one's working just fine. Pick the next one, give it a spin, and sure enough, we get a volt out of it. Now take one of them, pop it to there, and link the other two Now if we spin it, we should get around about two volts out of it. And we're not, we're still getting one volt out of it. So we've wired it the wrong way. So swap those two pins over. And lo and behold, two volts. When we did it the first way, it was the wrong way. It's because they were wound in different directions and fighting against each other. Now we've actually got them the right way, the voltage will add up. And we keep on doing that, adding those voltages in. So turning this by hand by the time I've connected those should give me about 9 of volts or so. Okay, and there it is all wired up. I'm going to stick a drill on it and we'll see what kind of volts we can get out of it. <laughs> That's awesome, it's about 30 volts. Actually. So if we take this thing apart, now, improvements that we've made, obviously, are the uh, EMF is proportional to the distance squared, and these metal blocks just stop at that plastic. That plastic's about two, three millimetres thick, so if I took the trouble of cutting out the squares and pushing those blocks through so that they were nearer here, then we'll see an increase in generation. Obviously, a good thing to do would be to use a stronger magnet. I mean, I just used that recycled magnet from a speaker, and I'm pretty pleased about how it performed, actually, to say it was a speaker magnet. There we go, let's put that back. Now, it's pretty obvious to me that you could put lots of things on this. I mean, if you put a uh, propeller on here, you've obviously got a wind turbine generator. Put a paddle wheel, you've obviously got a water generator. All this electronics is hanging out bare here, but what's the challenge of putting a box around it, eh? 
They might put some feet on it, I might cut those holes, not quite sure, we'll have a go and see how I feel about it. But there you go, that generator was made from a um, old speaker and recycled bits from microwave ovens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.